Hello fellow readers, Hannah here, and today we're gonna do my September wrap up. Look, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I read a shit ton in September. In fact, I'm so excited to talk about the stuff that I read because one, I'm back on booktube, I'm talking to you guys, but two, September was a number of really awesome science fiction readathons, so I read books for those. And it's amazing. Like I read so many good books. I read some not so good books, but like at the end of August, August, I wanted to read science fiction so bad that I was like chomping at the bit for the moment that September would start, which is great because it led me to read so many books. I'm currently at 11 books for the month and that doesn't even include what I'm currently reading because obviously I'm filming this a few days early so that I have time to edit it and get it up for you. But without further ado, let's just get into what I've read. The first book I picked up in September was Exit Strategy by Martha Wells. This is the fourth book in the the Murderbot Diaries. These are a set of novellas following a android self-named Murderbot who is a security unit for humans but doesn't really like humans and would sit in their little cubby and uh, watch their TV shows that they like. I can't really tell you much about this one as it is the fourth and final of the novellas so it would give uh, away quite a bit of the plot but the first book is about like I said a security unit helping a group of scientists exploring a planet and the series continues from there but I really liked this one. It culminates in a lot of the action from the previous ones into a resolution. There is a novel coming out, a full-length novel in this series later on, I think either next year or the year after and I cannot wait for that because I just all of the murder bot all of the time, all of the snark. I really loved this series. This was no exception and I I gave this one five stars. So part of it, it uh, part of September is that there were two readathons that I participated in. The first being Space Opera September and that was being run by SF180 I believe. I will leave a link to his channel down below and it was a really awesome readathon where there were challenges and you were trying to read books and collect equipment rise in the ranks as a uh, space goer. So this was a book that I picked for the Space Opera September and it fit a couple of the requirements. It's a novella, it's by a woman author. So yeah, one that didn't apply to any of the readathons that I was doing this month was uh, The Adventure Zone, Murder at the Rockport Limited. This is by the McElroy brothers and Carrie Peach. So this is um, a graphic novel and it is it's based on the Adventure Zone podcast, which uh, is created by the McElroy brothers, famously from My Brother, My Brother and Me. They play D&D &D with their dad and they've decided to, they've made them into graphic novels. This is the second volume and this is a mystery set on a train and it's so funny. It's a uh, classic uh, McElroy humor, very like funny. It's, it's um, snarky, but you know, in in a really nice uh, way and it's just it's just adorable if you know them read it if you don't pick up the first one it's it's just first one is the adventure zone here there be gerblins yeah if you like DD &D, if you like to laugh like there's so many good things in this and I gave this one also five stars back to the readathon for space opera September I picked up dune by Frank Herbert I love this cover most people know what dune is about it is following following a family that is, well, it's following a man named Paul Atreides who is sent to the planet Arrakis because his father was sent there by the emperor and they're supposed to take up this dukedom. Um, but because Arrakis is like this very important planet because they mine something called the spice which lets people see into the future. So yeah, so I picked this up for the Space Opera September. This uh, fit the challenge of a book that was published before I was born. This one was published I think in 1969 and I read this plus I listened to it on audio just because quite a hefty book. That was another challenge was a book over 500 pages. It was good. I don't know. I feel like 
like this book in particular got a bad rap because um, I've read enough science fiction that's more modern and so it didn't feel super new even though obviously the tropes and elements in this were pioneered by this novel. It's the, it won the first Hugo. Like it's one of those things that I think had I not read more science fiction I think I would have been more impressed by it. But it has great characterization. There's lots of court intrigue which I do like. I mean I'd be lying if I didn't say that some of the names for things didn't make me a little uncomfortable of like this white guy coming up with very Middle Eastern sounding names for stuff. But that might just be my own shit on it. I don't know. I did I did enjoy it. I just didn't love it. And so I ended up giving it three stars. Then I picked up from the library To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. This is a novella that Becky Chambers put out this year. It's brand new and it is about a group of scientists that are sent on an exploration to different uh, potentially habitable planets to do a scientific survey. The reason that they're able to do this is that science has now evolved to the point where there's something called somaforming, which is the ability for humans to go into space for extended periods of time without the physical limitations that we would normally have. So one of the things is that they can take radiation into their body and produce uh, energy with it so they don't have to eat as much. Obviously also radiation doesn't kill them. When they're put in stasis are given the elements to be able to survive on different planets. So on one of the planets they're made a little bit bulkier because that'll allow them to navigate the pl planet more efficiently. One they're given sort of like shiny skin because it's a very dark planet. And so we follow this group of scientists as they travel for different planets and their communications with Earth and the difficulties with that because they're 14 years away from being able to contact them. So any information they're getting is 14 years old. Any information they're sending is getting there in 14 years. So yeah, and I liked this. It was a really good novella. Um, Becky Chambers creates such interesting characters and worlds with her Wayfarer series. We got to see her beautiful uh, characterization and how she builds, you know, these interesting relationships between people. And you get that in this but you also get something that I think was present but wasn't the main focal point, which is incredible world building. You know, this is Becky Chambers showcasing her view on what alien worlds could be like. What is the vegetation like? What is the life forms like? What is, you know, the flora and fauna? And it's so good. I didn't, so I didn't hate the ending, but I didn't love it. So I did not give this a five star. It wasn't a, oh my God, I love this. I really liked it though and so I gave it four stars. Then I picked up an arc of uh, uh, a graphic novel called Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker and Wendy Yu or Zhu. This is a graphic novel. It's coming out in October and it is so cute. Oh, this is the story of Nova and Tam and Nova is hard of hearing and she is a witch. She lives with her grandmothers and she works in their bookstore and one day a friend of hers from when she was a kid, Tam, shows up again and Tam is a gender non-conforming werewolf and it's so cute and they like rekindle this like little romance that they had and there's like weird stuff going on. So there's like this adventure based around something going on in the woods. It is so cute, you guys. If you are not one for like scary things, but you like to read stuff for Halloween, you have to pick up Mooncakes. It is so cute. It is like that spooky without being scary. It is just amazing. And the art style is super cute. Yeah, I really liked this. Um, my only complaint with it was that that I found the ending a little um, wrapped up a little too easily for my personal taste, but otherwise it's so good. You should check it out. I gave Mooncakes four stars. Then I picked up my last book for Space Opera September and a book continuing on for Tome Infinity and Beyond, which I forgot to mention, but To Be Taught If Fortunate was a book that I read for that. But I read <laughs> The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. So this was the group pick for Team Natural Disasters.
Master for the Tome Infinity, and I also have just been meaning to read this forever. So I picked this up, I read it, and listened to the audio, as is the case for a lot of my books this month. Um, if you have been living under a rock, uh, the fifth season is about a planet that it is about the end of a planet, according to the book itself. But basically, we follow three characters through their journey on this planet where there are people with powers called origins and these people are able to control electromagnetic and like the the earth basically and they use these powers or like the society makes them use these powers for controlling earthquakes and like shifts in the planet itself um yeah this is this was really good and Kate Jemison's world building is insane like I don't know how her mind works but it is so Tolkien in its specificity and its vastness like she has a mythos and an entire like history built in and it's so amazing I I literally wanted to stop reading anything else and just continue this series but I had to continue for Tome Infinity so I did not continue on the series but I just I I want to it's so good oh and <laughs> I go without saying but I gave this five stars. Then I picked up Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. This was a reread for me. I've already read this but this is a sort of it's considered science fiction I guess. Samantha Schweblin is from Buenos Aires so this counted for a South American author and this is about a woman laying on her deathbed talking to a little boy who is not her own about the events leading up to her in the bed. It's really weird. It's a bizarre story. It's supposed to obviously be like a fever dream, but I will say that on the second reading, I enjoyed it way more and I gave this four stars. My camera's dying. All right, then I picked up Rosewater by Tade Thompson. So this was my book for for Tome Infinity. It, it was uh, for Africa um, because the book takes place in Nigeria and Tade Thompson was, uh, was born to Nigerian parents. Um, this is about Rosewater, which is a town where this biodome has landed. I you know, and it basically, it opens up and people are given healing properties uh, based on when it opens. And our main character, Karo, is one of these people. He has this ability that was uh, provided to him and he is a government agent and he does like interrogations and he also works for a bank doing security. And it's the story of him and there's like, there's this thing going around that's killing people like him with these abilities and he's trying to figure out what's happening and what you know what he can do about it. I did not care for Caro but that didn't mean I didn't like this. Um, the world building is really good. It's a really interesting concept. I just I just got a little confused. Some of the chapters were a little disjointed. It jumps between past and present but there's characters throughout so even though like you would know what section you were in it was a little hard to like keep that straight um, but I did enjoy it and I do want to continue with the series so I gave this three and a half stars. Then I picked up a, a short story collection called Maiden Mother Crone. This is edited by Gwen Benaway and this is a collection of short short fantasy stories about trans characters written by trans women. So that's a mouthful but holy man this collection is good. Um, This is like it's a truly unique short story collection and the way that trans stories translate so beautifully into fantasy stories and seamlessly is sort of, I don't think it should be surprising, but it is. I loved some of these stories so much that I can't wait to read more from these authors. I'm really excited. Each story was unique and dealt with in a different fashion. There were some that were more urban fantasy. There were traditional fantasy. There was like a and d type campaign, which I loved. Oh my goodness. Um, My favorite stories were the ones that subverted expectations of what a fantasy story can do and what being trans means and other ones that I really liked created a metaphor or an analogy about the trans experience in a fantasy context and I really enjoyed that. I felt like that was a really unique thing to do and a different way to explain what the trans experience is like. So yeah, I would definitely check out the short story collection. It is full of amazing, talented trans women.
Then I read another ARC for a book called Never Knew Until You. This was by L.E. Royal. So this story follows Parker. She is a 40-something year old woman who just got divorced because her wife has been cheating on her. She's been married for 14 years and doesn't really know where to go from here. And she finds an ad for the Pandora Agency, which is a group that puts doms and subs together for uh, relationships. And so Parker decides that she should try something new and decides to try this out. So the agency matches her up with Christina, who is a 20 something uh, dominant, and they build a relationship from there. This is a female female romance, uh, erotic romance novel. It, it was not without its issue. So my primary issue with it was that there was a lot of similarities to Fifty Shades of Grey. And not necessarily in good ways. Not that there's a lot good to say to Fifty Shades of Grey. Sorry, I don't really like that. Um, but yeah, my issue is that the main character in this, the dominant in this, has suffered trauma and she, that is why she became a dom. She has explored that trauma through this. And while I'm not saying that that probably doesn't happen ever, I just feel like between Fifty Shades of Grey and this, it creates this assumption that um, trauma is always in involved in a BDSM relationship when I think that's a really um, dangerous position to take. Now, I don't think that that's L.E. Royal's fault because obviously you can't hold her accountable for what uh, E.L. James wrote in Fifty Shades of Grey. But my point is, is that to have a mainstream novel that involves trauma leading to a BDSM relationship isn't ideal in my mind. With that being said, this was still a engaging, uh, interesting romance story. I liked the female female aspect. I liked the characters, even if some of them could be a little too perfect at times. I found the story a bit predictable. Uh, it's not breaking any new ground as far as romance goes. But overall, it was still, an, it was a enjoyable book and I gave it three stars. Finally, for this video, we have A Ball Lightning by Shishin Lu. So this is, this is the author of the Three Body series and this is a standalone novel about ball lightning. <laughs> Man, okay, so I read this and listened to it and talk about science fiction that I do not feel I am smart enough to read. <laughs> Holy man. This is so science heavy. It is about a scientist who when he was a child, his parents were both killed by ball lightning and he spends his entire life exploring it and figuring out what it means, what it could do, and sort of getting caught up in the military trying to uh, weapon weaponize ball lightning. I like this a lot. I don't know I'm smart enough to, to understand fully what happened, but there is sort of elements in here of the potential of like what could happen and what happens to things that are destroyed via ball lightning. I think Shishin Lu writes amazingly heavy science fiction that is, or amazingly hard science fiction that is still really intriguing. There's always a level of mystery involved that never makes it boring. It's always super interesting to see what's happening happening and figure out what is going on in the world. I'm just amazed by it and how his brain works and yeah, just can't handle it. And then before I close out this video, I'm just going to show you a couple of the things that I am currently reading. Um, I'm still, so I picked up Gideon the Ninth by Thames and Murr. I am reading this right now. Um, this is my library copy. I also have a physical copy, <laughs> but um, yeah, really loving this. This is lesbian being necromancers in space with a female fronted swordswoman. Uh, I'm really liking this. I'm hoping to finish it before the month is out. You can see my reading vlog to see my thoughts because obviously it's not included in here. And then finally, I am currently reading The Brief History of the Dead by Kevin Brockmeyer. So this is a novel that's a uh, dual perspective. So we have the city where people go after they die and they don't really know why they're there. It's not a heaven or a hell situation. It's literally uh, some sort of holding zone where people go and then eventually they move on and nobody knows why they move on or what's going on. They just know that that's what happens and suddenly people start disappearing more frequently and they're trying to figure out why that is happening. On the other side of the spectrum we have a scientist in Antarctica who is uh, supposed to be researching um, water and finding like purified water for the Coca-Cola 
Coca-Cola Corporation. And she is the only one on this station and she's trying to, she's gonna travel across Antarctica to go find her crew who haven't come back. So those are the ones that I'm currently reading and I will tell thoughts in my reading vlog. But yeah, that's what I read in September. It was a lot and it was a lot of really good things. There were some okay things in there and I'm super excited to, yeah, keep this up and keep reading. <laughs> so until next time, stay twisty.